Mastering Everyday English, a real-life conversation on transportation. Excuse me, do you know when the next bus arrives? Yes, the bus should be here in about five minutes. Great, thank you. I'm new to the city and still trying to figure out the public transportation system. No worries. It can be quite confusing at first. Are you heading to the city center? Yes, that's right. I have a meeting there in an hour. I hope I'll make it on time. You should be fine. Once the bus arrives, it's only a 15-minute ride to the city center. Just make sure you get off at the central station. Got it, central station. Thanks for the tip. Do you use the bus often? Yes, pretty much every day. It's convenient and much cheaper than driving, considering the parking fees in the city. I can imagine. I haven't decided whether to get a car yet. Public transport seems to cover all my needs so far. If you're living and working in the city, you might find that you won't need a car at all. The environmental impact is also something to consider. That's a good point. I'm all for reducing my carbon footprint. Plus, this gives me a chance to interact with locals and improve my English. Exactly. Speaking of which, your English is very good. How long have you been learning? Thank you. I've been learning for about two years now. I try to practice as much as I can. Keep it up. Immersing yourself in the language is the best way to learn. Oh, look, the bus is coming. Perfect timing. Well, it was nice talking to you. Thank you for the help. My pleasure. Have a great day and good luck with your meeting. Thanks, you too. The Stone Bridge, a conversation filled with knowledge. Hello, Jennifer. Fancy meeting you here on this old stone bridge. Hi, George. Yes, it's quite a coincidence. I love coming here for the view and the history. How about you? Same here. It's fascinating to think about all the people who have crossed this bridge over the years. Absolutely. Did you know this bridge was built in the 18th century and is one of the oldest in the region? Really? That's quite impressive. It's amazing how it has stood the test of time. Indeed. It's a testament to the craftsmanship of that era. I read that it was a major trade route back in the day. That makes sense. Bridges like this one were crucial for commerce and travel in the past. Exactly. And it's not just about utility, the design is so artistic. Look at the intricate stonework. You're right. The details are incredible. It's like a piece of art as much as a piece of engineering. Speaking of art, have you noticed the sculptures at each end of the bridge? Yes, I have. They add such a unique character to it. Do you know the story behind them? I do, actually. They represent the guardians of the bridge, meant to protect travelers as they pass. That's fascinating. It adds a whole new layer to the bridge's history. It does. And it's a great reminder of how structures like this bridge are more than just functional, they're steeped in history and culture. Absolutely. It's amazing how something as simple as a bridge can tell us so much about the past. I couldn't agree more. 
It's like a journey through time. Well, I should get going. It was great talking to you, George. Likewise, Jennifer. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Take care. Explore Europe, a beginner's guide to travel. Does Owen like traveling to Europe? Yes, Owen loves traveling to Europe. What is the capital of France? The capital of France is Paris. Can Nancy speak Spanish in Spain? Yes, Nancy can speak Spanish in Spain. Is London a city in England? Yes, London is a city in England. Does Owen need a passport to visit Italy? Yes, Owen needs a passport to visit Italy. What currency does Germany use? Germany uses the euro. Can Nancy see the Eiffel Tower in Paris? Yes, Nancy can see the Eiffel Tower in Paris. Is English spoken in Ireland? Yes, people speak English in Ireland. Does Owen find Italian food delicious? Yes, Owen finds Italian food delicious. Can Nancy use the euro in Switzerland? No, Switzerland does not use the euro. Is Madrid a city in Spain? Yes, Madrid is a city in Spain. Does Owen need a visa to visit Germany? It depends on his nationality. Can Nancy ride a bike in Amsterdam? Yes, Nancy can ride a bike in Amsterdam. Is the River Thames in London? Yes, the River Thames is in London. Does Owen like German beer? Yes, Owen likes German beer. Can Nancy see the Northern Lights in Norway? Yes, Nancy can see the Northern Lights in Norway. Is pizza famous in Italy? Yes, pizza is famous in Italy. Does Owen find French easy to learn? Owen finds French a bit hard to learn. Can Nancy use pounds in the UK? Yes, Nancy can use pounds in the UK. Is the Louvre Museum in Paris? Yes, the Louvre Museum is in Paris. Dubai Diaries, an unforgettable stay at the Burj Al Arab. Hello everyone. I'm Charles, and joining me today is Linda, who recently returned from a spectacular trip to Dubai. Linda, it's great to have you here. Thanks, Charles. I'm thrilled to share my experiences. Dubai is a dream destination for many, and my stay at the Burj Al Arab was nothing short of magical. The Burj Al Arab is known as the epitome of luxury. Can you tell us a bit about what makes it so special? Absolutely, Charles. From the moment you arrive, you're treated like royalty. The architecture alone is breathtaking, standing on its own island, with views that capture the Arabian Gulf in all its glory. That sounds amazing. I've heard the service there is unparalleled. What was your experience? You heard right. The personal butler service ensures your every need is met. Whether it's dining at one of their nine world-class restaurants or enjoying the private beach, everything is exceptional. Speaking of dining, Dubai is famous for its culinary scene. Did any dish stand out for you? Oh, where do I begin? The Arabic cuisine is rich and flavorful. I had the best shawarma and hummus. And the dates. They were the freshest I've ever tasted. Each restaurant in the Burj Al Arab offers a unique dining experience with views you can't find anywhere else. It's not just about the luxury, right? Dubai offers a blend of tradition and modernity. Did you get to explore the city? Yes, and that's what I love the most. 
One day I was exploring the historic Al Fahidi neighborhood, and the next, I was shopping in the world's largest mall. The contrast is striking, and it gives you a real sense of Dubai's spirit. For our viewers thinking about visiting Dubai and maybe splurging on a stay at the Burj Al Arab, any tips? Definitely. First, book your stay well in advance. And don't miss the sunset views from the Skyview Bar. Also, take time to explore beyond the hotel. Dubai is rich in culture, adventure, and culinary delights. Every corner has something new to offer. Thank you, Linda, for sharing your incredible journey with us. It's clear Dubai and the Burj Al Arab hold special places in your heart. They do, Charles. And I hope our discussion inspires others to explore Dubai's wonders. Thank you for having me. And thank you, viewers, for joining us. If you're planning a trip or just dreaming of one, we hope this conversation sparks your wanderlust. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more travel stories and tips. Safe travels, everyone! Discover new hobbies, an English conversation. Hi Jennifer, you seem quite relaxed these days. What's your secret? Hi Thomas. Honestly, I've been spending more time on my hobbies. It really helps to unwind. How about you? What hobbies do you have? I'm into reading and occasionally hiking. But I've been looking for something new. What do you enjoy doing in your free time? Besides reading, I love painting and trying out new recipes. Cooking is quite therapeutic for me. That sounds interesting. I've always wanted to try painting, but I'm not sure I'd be good at it. Oh, it's not about being good or bad, Thomas. It's about expressing yourself and enjoying the process. You should give it a try. Maybe I will. And cooking, huh? What's your favorite dish to prepare? I enjoy making Italian food. There's something about pasta dishes that's just so comforting. What about you? Any favorite dishes you like to make or eat? I'm more of a barbecue guy. Love grilling whenever I get the chance. But Italian does sound tempting. Maybe you can share some recipes? Absolutely, I'd love to. And I'd like to learn more about grilling too. Maybe we could exchange tips? That sounds like a great idea. And speaking of trying new things, have you taken up any new hobbies recently? Yes, actually. I've started gardening. It's quite rewarding to grow your own vegetables and flowers. Gardening, huh? That's one I haven't considered. Sounds like a peaceful activity. It really is. Plus, it gets you outdoors. You should come over sometime, I can show you the basics. I'd like that. Thanks, Jennifer. It's great to learn about different hobbies. Maybe we can start a hobby club. I love that idea, Thomas. Let's do it. It'll be fun to share our hobbies with others and maybe learn a few new ones along the way. Agreed. Thanks for the chat, Jennifer. I'm looking forward to our new adventures. Same here, Thomas. Take care and see you soon. Mastering Basic English Verbs, a beginner's guide how do you use to be in a sentence? You used to be to describe someone or something. For example, Pascal is a teacher. 
What is the past tense of go? The past tense of go is went. For example, Barbara went to France last year. How do you make a sentence negative in simple present tense? You had do not before the verb for most verbs. For example, Pascal does not play football. How do you ask a question in English? You invert the subject and the auxiliary verb. For example, is Barbara from the UK? What is the plural form of child? The plural form of child is children. For example, Barbara has two children. How do you use have to talk about possessions? You use have to indicate ownership. For example, Pascal has a new book. How do you express ability in English? You use can to express ability. For example, Barbara can speak three languages. What is the continuous tense form of to run? The continuous tense form of to run is running. For example, Pascal is running in the park. How do you form the past simple tense? For regular verbs, you add ed to the base form. For example, Barbara watched a movie last night. How do you make a polite request? You use could or would for polite requests. For example, could you pass the salt, please? How do you express future plans? You use going to for future plans. For example, Pascal is going to visit Germany next month. What is the comparative form of big? The comparative form of big is bigger. For example, Barbara has a bigger car now. How do you use like to talk about preferences? You use like followed by a gerund or noun. For example, Pascal likes playing chess. How do you form the past perfect tense? You use it followed by the past participle. For example, Barbara had finished her work before she went home. What is the difference between there and there? There refers to a place, and there indicates possession. For example, their house is over there. How do you use much and many? Use much with uncountable nouns and many with countable nouns. For example, Pascal doesn't have much time. Barbara doesn't have many friends. How do you form the present perfect tense? You use have as followed by the past participle. For example, Barbara has visited Italy twice. How do you use should for advice? You use should to give advice. For example, Pascal should study more for his exams. What is the opposite of accept? The opposite of accept is reject. For example, Barbara rejected the offer. How do you express necessity? You use must to express necessity. For example, Pascal must wear a uniform to school. I hope these examples are useful for your English learning. Thanks for watching.